what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so wanted to kind of let you guys know i'm kind of under the weather so if i sound a little bit congested in this video i'm not at 100 percent but i definitely wanted to get this out to you guys as soon as possible because i definitely wanted to talk about the spoiler side of things from the, the recent Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, I'm going to get into the good things that I liked about the movie. I'm definitely going to get into the bad things that I felt definitely brought the movie down. But for me, overall, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people... Um, didn't really like the movie as much you know uh, and then there's also uh, a lot of people that did like the movie so it's i've seen like 50 50 like split decisions you know some people hated the movie some people thought it was the best mortal kombat movie we've had so you know it, it's it's really up to your personal taste but i do think anyone that's a mortal kombat fan i still think they should at least check it out for sure so Let's start with some of the bad things on the spoiler side of uh, things for this movie. Um, first and foremost, uh, Cole Young being our main protagonist. Um, he's our, uh, he's a descendant of uh, Hanzo Asashi, um, a.k.a. Scorpion. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why he was the main protagonist. I honestly thought, and I think a lot of people that I... Um, have made this comment even some people i know personally they thought johnny cage would have been the perfect person for us to get introduced as the main protagonist um it sucks johnny cage is not actually in the film like they set it up for him being in the, the later films the next film if they make one but he's not in this film which kind of sucks and cole young he's he's generic he is literally a creative character if Mortal Kombat had a creative character system, that's what Cole Young is. Insert moves, insert dialogue. He is, he's bland, he's boring, he barely has any dialogue. You can't really get invested in his character. Um, you get introduced to him in like this underground UFC type style match. And, you know, he ends up losing the match. And I'm thinking, well, maybe because he's so cold that he throw fights for his opponents to make them look good. No, he just loses matches because he sucks. Throughout the movie, he is, he he really isn't really useful. Um, in the movie, the way they go about characters having their powers, they call it, uh, I want to say it's Arcania, Ar Arcana, yeah, Arcana. I think that's uh, how they pronounce it, Arcana. That's how they, I guess you could say, you know, find a way to make sense of how these characters have powers, and they call it Arcana. And you have to unlock your Arcana in order for you to get the powers or whatnot. Now, we meet up with Sonya Blade. She doesn't have any powers, right? And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. She doesn't have any powers, but she can hold her own in one-on-one -on -one combat. Cole doesn't seem like he can do that at all not even gonna lie to you so there's been situations where his arcana hasn't shown up and he's gotten someone killed aka kun lao he ends up getting killed kun lao saves his life and ends up getting his soul taken by sing song sing soon and i'm just like what I'm, i was so confused i was like Kun Lao is a character that I actually was liking in the film. I like this, you know, his design, the way he's introduced. You know what I'm saying? It kind of fit the com like uh, the games. Like, he's a little arrogant. You know what I'm saying? But I like this character. I wish I could have seen more of him. But he ends up getting killed off because he had to save Cole. Goofy ass, bro. I, that was annoying. I'm not even going to lie to you. Cole is a detriment to this film. And not nothing against the actor. It's just he's a detriment to this film for the simple fact that he does nothing. All the other characters around him are more compelling and interesting than he is. And he's kind of like the damsel in distress until he gets his powers. And let's not talk about when he gets his powers. Dude's armor looks like a wicker basket, bro. Literally, his armor looks like a wicker basket. He can redirect like attacks like the energy from the attacks you can redirect it which is cool but his armor looks kind of lame um he doesn't get his arcana until his his family is in jeopardy you know the cliche stuff um 
He ends up defeating Goro. Mind you, he couldn't defeat somebody in the underground UFC match, but he defeats Goro because he gets his arcana in just the nick of time and kills Goro. It was a nice fight scene, but it was just one of those things like Goro is like a top tier Mortal Kombat opponent, and he's get he basically gets destroyed by Wicker Basket Man. Like I, I just. If they would have made Cole a cooler character, gave him some type of emotion, he wasn't a blank slate, I think I would, we would care more. There's nothing wrong with introducing someone into the franchise as a surrogate person for the audience to follow along that doesn't really know anything about Mortal Kombat. But honestly, I think you could have went with Johnny Cage. I think it would have been much better. So, yeah. Cole definitely is the low point of this movie and should not even have been a character if they weren't going to do nothing with him. Um, the selection of characters they ended up using really wasn't that that prominent. Unfortunately, they didn't really have too many characters on both sides, the Nether Realm side and the Earth Realm side. It was just kind of lackluster. Of course, you had the Liu Kang and the Kung Lao as expected. Um... Um, but you didn't get Johnny Cage, like I said at the beginning. <clears throat> Johnny Cage is not in the film. Um, uh, you get Raiden, and that's cool. You get Scorpion and Sub Zero, the classic ones. But you know, they even get you get Reptile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he he shows up for a little bit. But I just felt like they were kind of lackluster on both sides. So I'm like I said, I, I get it. this movie takes place right before the tournament. So I get that they're trying to you know build up for the tournament and i'm sure more characters will get involved but as is being the first showing for this rebranding of this uh like a reboot of this uh this franchise it was kind of lackluster not gonna lie the earth champion sucks outside of kung lao and um and uh luke kane they suck and let's not get started on luke kane even though luke kane he's okay but I, I know a lot of people felt like he didn't look like Luke Kang. And maybe because we don't really get a chance to get to know the character. We just know he can control fire and he, you know, spawns up a fire dragon, which I thought was pretty dope. But we don't get chances to get invested with these characters. You know what I'm saying? So this is also another notch because we get introduced to the characters and then that's it. Like we don't really get time to really spend with them and and stuff like that which i get it they don't have that much time to do because it's they're just trying to get to the next set piece like it, it, that kind of hampers the film in my opinion people you know especially fans of mortal kombat you know what i'm saying they know who Liu kang is and it's like we don't really spend too much time with these iconic characters from the game so it kind of sucks but we go back to cold boring ass ah that shit sucks the plot of this doesn't really make sense either for the sense of or well, for the fact that basically Shang Tsung is trying to <clears throat> what's the word take out the Earth Realm champions by killing them ahead of time of Mortal before they have Mortal Kombat before they had the, the Mortal Kombat tournament and I'm just like that they can't even they shouldn't be able to do that the elder god should get involved in the mix because it's like how can they do that the tournament is supposed to happen why are they allowed to go to earth realm to kill earth's champions before the tournament happened how is that even a thing what the hell is going on the elder gods don't give no fucks clearly i, I don't know i, I kind of that didn't make sense to me the fact that um Raiden, he's in the movie, but not much. The fact that he can banish Kung Lao, I mean, not Kung Lao, uh, Shang Tsung, back to the, the Nether Realm when he enters in this temple. But when uh, Kung Lao was getting his soul sucked, he didn't do anything, bro. I, I, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. He's one of your most powerful fighters. And you just let his soul get taken up to save Cole's goofy ass. Well, you could have zapped him away too. And then I'm just sitting there like, what? And then he sat up there and said, well, you know, I, I can't get, in, get in, involved in mortal affairs. I, okay. All right. Yeah. 
thought, okay, Raiden, thanks for being, for doing absolutely nothing. Well, you could have easily just banished them from your temple. You did it before previous, in like a couple scenes previous. You banished them to the nether realm when they tried to pull up on your gang and kill everybody. Like, I don't, I guess. <clears throat> I guess, man. Um, let's see, if there anything else... Uh, that I really wasn't a big fan of. Oh, and also towards the end, even though the fighting was excellent, I'm gonna talk about that on the good side of things. Uh, um, it was short. And that's the only only thing about that is this is Mortal Kombat. You're here to see the fights. You're here to see the blood and the guts and the gores and the violence. You get it, but in very small doses. They keep cutting back to Cole. I don't care about him. At least if they was cutting back to like a Johnny Cage character, I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. But it messes up the pacing when you're sitting there wanting to see more Mortal Kombat fighting. And then you go back to this boring ass character as in Cole. His story, his story. I don't I don't give a damn about that, bro. I just want to see people die and, and, and fight and, and martial arts. I, I know that's kind of sick to say, but that's what Mortal Kombat is. People dying in brutal ways, the martial arts, the fighting, that's what it is. Mortal Kombat, not Cole and Mortal Kombat, just Mortal Kombat. So that's the, the major thing I can think of just on the on the uh, negative side of things, the bad side of things that I wasn't really rocking with. Um, now let's get into the good things that uh the, the good parts of the movie that i thoroughly enjoyed and i don't think it's any secret to anybody that has seen the movie kano is the best part of this movie shout out to josh lawson who plays kano he knocked it out the part he was the perfect embodiment of kano i said it in my spoiler free review he is one of those type of characters that own the role so well I don't see anyone else playing Kano as well as he did. Like he he has the um, the Hugh Jackman and the uh, Robbie Downey Jr. where they play these comic book characters or these superhero characters. That's them. They 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 embody that role so much that it's them. You can only see them playing that role. I can only see Josh Lawson playing as Kano. I think he's fantastic. Uh, it sucks he ends up getting killed. Uh, for those who don't know, the champions are chosen by this little dragon birthmark. You can be born with it, or if you kill someone with the dragon birthmark, you become the next chosen champion for Earth Realm. And Kano has the mark, and Sonya Blade doesn't. You can kind of see where it was going to. It's alluding that eventually Sonya Blade is going to end up killing Kano, which sucks because he was fantastic. Any scene he was in, he made it ten times better. He he kind of made the pacing of the movie go back, go in a you know it was it was more in a positive direction. Like when his scene, when he was in a scene. You was paying attention, you was laughing, you was, you know, enjoying what he was bringing with the other characters around. Like, he owned every single scene. He made the pacing fantastic. Um, and then when he's not in the scene, it, it, it kind of sucks. You know, and granted, you can say, well, he's taken away from every other character. True. But when you got Cole sitting next to you, it doesn't really take much to take away from his character. Because there is no character there. He's just a blank slate. So Kano was one of, if not the best part of this movie. Um, the first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie was fantastic. It's the best way to, to hype you up for a Mortal Kombat film. Um, did it stick to landing? Not so much. But I still enjoyed it though. You know, I, I, I think a lot of people were hyped about the beginning of it. They kind of wavered off towards the end of the film because they just wasn't liking it as much as they thought they would. But that beginning sequence with Hanzo Asashi and Sub Zero, and you know him, uh, Hanzo chilling with his family, and they them, them getting murdered, and then he just uh killing everyone, all everyone that's around him. He's just brutally murdering them. Thought it was beautiful. Him and Sub Zero fighting at the beginning thought that was beautiful it really hyped you up for the movie and i wish more of the movie had more scenes like that i think that would have been more fantastic and would have fit the mortal Kombat type vibe um 
let's see um sub-zero as a character he literally held it down i am be honest with you sub-zero was the most overpowered character <laughs> in this movie and he was badass like you could tell sub-zero was that dude like when he destroyed jack's arms brutal as hell froze his arms and just broke them brutal as hell dude I, I i like the way he was using his ice powers like he would conjure up some ice like snow like hail and then he would lift it up and then throw it down when he was hunting coal and jacks i thought that was pretty dope and the ending fight scene between him and finally with scorpion uh comes to life from hell or whatnot and he's uh basically fighting him i thought that was fantastic that whole fight sequence definitely gave me the video game vibes with scorpion using his combo attacks and techniques i thought that was cool bro like i really wish there was more moments like that you know when the other characters are fighting like melina is fighting once again cold and at this point uh sonya blade comes in with her powers and she blows a hole through melina's uh like chest like her like a stomach area and then she dies it was a one shot and i'm just like damn bro like i really wish we could have got a little bit more of these fighting scenes you know what i'm saying I, I feel like the fighting scenes were cut short so i i really wanted more of this um i want to say um Jax had a nice uh nice little fighting scene on the you guys know the little pit area where you can knock somebody off they fall all the way down to the pit below with the spikes and stuff i kind of wish that would have happened with the character he was fighting against um but even his one-liners fit the video game him smashing his head uh to a pulp i thought that was pretty cool i'm just like okay there's some good things in this film that give me the video game vibes it's just they're not there long enough and i think that's my biggest issue with this film like it's so much promise but they're not expounded upon the fighting was great the gore and violence was spot on um natara she's like this wean creature i'm telling you man they they really picked the z team for nether realm but natara she's this wean creature and she get hits with such a dope cla dope and brutal fatality it's got actually i think the fate one of the fatalities in mortal kombat uh 11 um where um uh, kung lao throws his hat on the ground and he was riding the back of her and she ends up sliding while the hat's rotating in the ground and splits her in half i thought that was brutal definitely definitely sick man and i like the little one-liners that was talking about fatality and stuff like that and I, I, it, it was cool they had there were some great things here i know a lot of people are quick to hate on this film but i do think there was some great things here and i do think they did right by some of the material could have been a lot better for sure but these are just some of the good things i can think off the top of my head and i remember that i enjoy so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy this film did you hate it let me know uh, i i, I want to get a, a discussion uh let's start a discussion down below and, and who was your favorite character out of the film me personally it was kano i hope they bring him back in the next film because definitely he was a he was the best part of this film character wise so i would love your guys opinion appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking in with me I'll see y'all next one. Peace.